Cat says we're live. Sorry, I'm trying to get this. Anyways, okay, well, we'll just deal with that later. Uh, hello, uh, Brian Johnson here, Better Cock Does at Home. And you may have seen recently, we just finished our home bar. And we are actually going to stock it now because I've got tons of stuff uh, laying all over my house. Our dining room, closets, kitchen, and we're going to try to fill it up here. We have, I'm not totally sure how many bottles we have in our collection. I think like 130 maybe. I think this is going to hold about 100 or so. Um, so, um, yeah, we're going to just kind of take it and goes. And I'll, you know, I'll mention just a little bit about the bottles. Feel free to ask questions. Hopefully they'll be able to respond to them in real time here. Um, you know. Tell your friends, like, hey, this guy's got a really cool home bar. He makes really good drinks because we want to get more subscribers. We want to do more stuff. Um, that kind of thing as we um, build out our bar and kind of really restart the better cocktails at home media empire, if you will, which is maybe a strong word, but um, that's what we're going to go for. So we're going to have, uh, I'm just going to start taking bottles. We're going to start putting them on shelves and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, do you want to grab me a piece of paper? I'm going to keep track of how many bottles we have because I'm curious how many bottles are actually going to fit here. I'm going to estimate about 100, uh, maybe a little less. Um, so thanks for everybody for watching and tuning in. Um, probably going to take about maybe 30 minutes to do this. I'm not totally sure. I've got an Alaska cocktail to help me out, which is just gin, yellow chartreuse. Uh, it was really simple and it's going to get the job done. So... Uh, the first bottle I'll put on is my bottle of Pappy, 20 year old. Um, it's super delicious stuff. Uh, a little overrated and not worth the price that people pay for this stuff in my opinion, but it's still an amazing bottle and it is incredibly delicious. But I would never pay what people pay for it. So, do my pen, paper, we're going to start to take a little inventory here. So, bottle one, Pappy Van Winkle, 20 year. And I probably get to rearrange this stuff as we go because I probably don't need this on a quick access bar. So let's move it up there. Uh, next bottle we have, Luxardo Amaro Abano. Um, this is super nice. Uh, hey Jordan, thanks for tuning in. And I really like this bottle, it's really tasty. Uh, my wife just picked this up recently, kind of randomly, but I really like it. It just got a lot of nice like richness to it. Also, I don't use that often, so this will probably be where I keep most of my stuff I use like frequently. Uh, we got some Willet Rye Whiskey. Uh, this is four years. It's almost gone, but it's um, delicious stuff that I got actually years ago, and I love it though. It is really good. Let's see. It's like a surprise. I don't know what's going to be put on the shelf next. So next up we have Gaffard Banan du Brazil. Uh, basically a banana liqueur. Very nice. Um, I haven't actually, this is a pretty recent acquisition for us, so I haven't actually played with it that much, which is pretty full. Um, so I want to be able to spend a little more time with it. Actually, oh wait, shoot, I'm not keeping track of the bottles. That's what, four? Yeah. So Dry Fly Wheat Whiskey. This is super old, and um, this is the first whiskey that was released in Washington, where our state where we're from, um, that was since like Prohibition. This was like the first one. And so um, it's really old. It's an okay bottle of, it's not great. I mean, it's, I kind of, it's okay. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's okay. We'll leave it at that. Oh, okay, here we've got some good stuff. So I've got two bottles here. Oh, that's mix five. we got two more coming up. So here we have um, Lost Spirits, Navy style rum, this is 61%, so Lost Spirits is a distillery down in LA, um, and they're doing really cool stuff with interesting distillation methods, and their stuff is amazingly flavorful, and I'm really super excited. We went on a tour of the distillery last summer, um, and it was a super, super um, amazingly good thing. Somebody says my Instagram feed's paused. I hope it's not paused. I don't know what's going on. This is our first, this is an experiment for us, so we're gonna see how it goes. I don't know. We'll see. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep plowing ahead. This is an experiment. We're gonna try to do more of these and see how we do as as time goes on. Um, so this is 61% really good. This is the same the same juice. This is what they call Prometheus. 
and it is the same juice, but there's an extra process they did to it, which is really, um, there's subtle differences, but really good still. I really like those. I love those rums. They're just super tasty. Um, you have tons of flavor to them, which is great. So, we're up to seven bottles, and we've got a lot left to go. Oh, okay. Plantation, Trinidad, 1999. Um, this is really tasty stuff, which is why I kind of like slowly drain this um, and sip it. I don't really go through it fast or mix with it, but it's just kind of, I really love the flavor on it. Let's put it over there, why not? Uh, we have another plantation rum bottle. This is the 73% uh, overproof original dark. This one went away. I think the OFTD kind of replaced it. Um, but this is this is good, tasty stuff. I like all the plantation stuff for mixing. Uh, here's a bottle of Plantation Jamaica 2000. I think they're on the 2001 vintage now, I think. Um, I should probably check on that, but this is also another favorite bottle of mine. It's okay amount of plantation rum, but we'll see if we can get more because it's delicious. Um, Trader Vic's Macadamia Night Liqueur. This is a bottle that I mostly use for Mac Nut Chi Chi drinks. And I've experimented with it a few other things, but I've never really taken the time to do more with it. And I need to actually um, because it is really tasty. I don't use it that often, so I'm going to put it on the very taller shelf, and I'm going to use a step stool to get up there, because it's our ceilings are nine and a half feet in this bar, so I need a little step stool. All right, next up, another rum ball, Ron, Ron Zacapa. This is it's, it's a tasty stuff. Um, I probably won't replace this when I'm done with it, um, but uh, it's I use it. I have one drink that I used it in, and I really like it. I'm gonna make it in a video really soon um, because it's an amazing drink that I came up with. I love it. So I'm gonna use it all at office. So we'll put it on the top shelf as well. Here we go. Cuma uh, Cassis. This is from Odd Society in Vancouver, a distillery up there, and. This is really tasty. I don't use it like that often, uh, just kind of like a flavoring agent, but I really like this one. And um, they the Odd Society produces some really good bottles. And I really have no idea where I'm putting these things. Uh, I'm sure we like moving stuff around as we go. Uh oh, I forgot my keeping track number. What am I up to? Let's see, three, six, seven, plus another six. So we have. Three. I gotta do a better job of keeping track because I'm curious how many we have. Uh, let's see. Jordan wants to be in my live video. I don't know how to do that. We're gonna figure this out. This is a new. This is a new Instagram streaming. So Jordan, if I don't do it this time, we'll do it another time. I promise. Um, Art the Age Rhubarb. I, this is another one. My wife really likes this one. I haven't played with it too much. It goes well in like summer drinks. Kind of a nice little bit herbal flavor. Uh, we'll put that up top. Somewhere, maybe over here. I'm gonna leave room up top because we got punch punch bowls that go up there. Chinar. Um, it's pretty common nowadays, which is kind of crazy because if you think like 10 years ago, this is the kind of stuff that wasn't as common all the Amaros, and now they're just like it's just that's the thing that's what we're seeing with the the cocktail changes we've had. All right, I think we're up to 15 bottles now, which is cool because we're like 10% there. Ooh, this is a good one. Uh, this is the Appleton 21. My wife got this to me for Christmas. Not this year, last year maybe. Yeah. Um, it's super tasty though. I love it. Amazing. We'll put that one right there because it's an attractive looking bottle. And it deserves to be lit up. Alright, that's one more. I gotta remember to keep track of these. This is a good refresher for me because I remember what bottles. My bottles have been put away for like almost, it's, we've been working on this bar for almost a year now and we're kind of slow at it, I get that. Um, but we have kids and jobs and lives and everything else and so it's not priority one, but 
it's nice to like kind of like oh yeah i forgot about that bottle so this is kind of cool for us too um, this is copper works they're a distillery up in downtown seattle and um their stuff's pretty good like on small distilleries i'm kind of iffy on stuff that sometimes is really good sometimes it's not good it just really depends um, I think they make really cool stuff. This is a gin that they do, but then they cask finish it. And this one happens to be finished in um, New American Oak. I have one other bottle in a different cask finish. Um, so I'll do a video where I kind of compare them, which I'm excited about. Again, not one I use a lot. Um, let's see, that was that bottle. Laird's Old Apple Brandy. This is super tasty. Um, I love apple brandy, although it's interesting. I used this in a old fat apple brandy old fashioned the other day, and it didn't taste anywhere near as good as I thought it would. So I'm kind of like, what's up with that? But I'll uh, kind of explore some more and play with it. Uh, here we have a super old bottle of Cointro. I think this is from, I think based on the tack, the tack strip. I think it's probably like in the '60s. Um, and I actually want to do some taste testing with vintage spirits compared to their modern counterparts. So like this Cointreau will be one of the ones that we do. I got that from my, um, my grandparents actually. Um, here we have a bottle of Jambui. I believe this is from the 70s. And I got this from um, my wife's grandfather. Um, he got it from the US Marine Mess Hall. As you can see with a sticker on here, or maybe you can't. Or we gotta work on our lighting a little bit, so stay with us on that. But this would be another kind of vintage comparison to what we have with the modern current dram movie. And we'll see how similar they are. Okay, I need a, I need a little sip of this. Cheers to everybody watching us, I appreciate it. If you're just tuning in, I'm Brian Johnson, we're gonna restart Better Cockles at Home. We got our home bar going. Um, share with your friends, be like, hey, you should make really cool cocktails because when I come to your house, then I want to make them too. So, you know, we want to grow what we're doing. And so, yeah, I appreciate everybody who's watched us over the years. And um, I just, it means a lot of people like say like how much we've, you know, improved their drink making or like things that they've tried that we've made. It's pretty cool. So thanks for watching. Uh, let's go back to more bottles because I want to go to bed at some point tonight. And so this is a bottle of Chartreuse VEP green. This is amazing. You can kind of see it in here. Um, it's expensive. It's actually quite a bit different than the standard green chartreuse. And then I bought this for my wife because she's addicted to green chartreuse. Um, she goes through a lot of it. But this is really special because she had our second child. And so I thought this would be a good gift for her. So I bought it for her. So, we'll put that somewhere up there. Okay, punch bowl. Um, I got this in a state sale, and it's, I don't know the exact material, if it's brass or what it is, it's some kind of metal, um, and it's got these like semi-precious jewel insets. I just thought it looked kind of cool. Um, and so, yeah, these are going up top. Sorry. <laughs> uh, get a little bit of scotch. I don't have a ton of scotch just because I've always been kind of a cocktail guy. Um, and so, and usually, as you probably know, scotch isn't used in a lot of classic cocktails. Um, but it doesn't mean I don't like to sip on it. But it's just, I have some, I'm going to go for breadth rather than depth in most of my collection. So I don't have a ton of scotch. But this uh, Belvany 14 year old Caribbean cask um, is one of my few ones. And it's almost, it's almost gone. So not too much left. I think I'm a couple behind here. Uh, another another scotch, the Freud Quarter Cask. Um, this stuff is pretty, this is the higher proof than the standard um, Lafroy, which is um, good. And I actually use this sometimes in uh, in the road cocktail. It gives it a little bit extra punch, which turns into a really strong drink, but it's really good. So I'll put that somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I'm not sure where. Um, Okay, so I think that was that one. Hopefully, maybe somebody, somebody watching is keeping track of how many bottles I'm doing. That'd be awesome. If somebody wants to do that. Uh, okay, so we got Lemon Heart coming out. 
Uh, Lemon Harf, this is 80 proof. This is a modern bottle. This one I got in Canada um, a year or two ago. And so I use this sometimes in tiki drinks, just add some that like rich Demerara flavor. Um, so that's one bottle. I'll put that one. That one might get used pretty often, so I'll put that one there. Time for a little sip of Alaska. And then we have three bottles of the old school, I think this is two generations ago, um, Lemon Heart 151. So this one's almost gone and I've got two bottles in reserve. So once this is gone, this is it for me because I don't have any, any more of it. Um, so we'll put these. I'm actually going to put my duplicate bottles down on the ground for now until I figure out. What the heck I'm going to do with them because I don't know where my duplicate. I don't have a ton of duplicates. Some people buy them and store them and I don't have a ton of those. Um, here we have an ice, ice ball maker. I think I got this from Cocktail Kingdom. Yep. So um, it's kind of a fun tool, like completely unnecessary in the world of cocktails, but you know, it's, it's fun to have. Put that back there for now. Try to keep on bottle count. And feel free if you're watching, you know, throw out questions, comments, say hi. Um, I'll try to make sure I'm watching the screens as I do this. this is, we're trying to do more live streaming. Um, so this is kind of new for us, but we're going to get better as we go. All right, old granddad 114. Um, this stuff makes a mean mint julep because mint juleps can dilute really fast because there's a lot of ice in there. And so then they get, to my opinion, they get too watery too quickly. And so if I use like a higher proof like this, like the 114, then I can really get my mint julep to kind of stand up longer. Um, so I really like that bottle for that. Uh, here we have... I'm not totally sure how to say it. Arundel, Arundel, Cane Run. This is on um, the British Virgin Islands. So my dad went on a cruise there a couple years ago and picked this bottle up. And it's really, it's an interesting rum. It's not like, it's not like terrible or anything. It just has a really interesting flavor to it. So I'll just leave it at that. Maybe we'll dissect it a little bit further later. Actually, let's put that one on top because I don't use that one all that often. Okay, we're up to like 20 something bottles if I'm keeping track, but I'm probably not. Um, okay, here's another one, Copper Works uh, Cask Age Gin. This one was done in Sherry Cask, so at some point I'll do a comparison um, between these two. Uh, bottle of Pims number one, pretty classic stuff. And I actually don't use it as much as you think I would. I need to actually play with this. If you guys use PIMS in more than just PIMS cup, like let me know. I'd be curious what you guys do with it because I need to use it more. Okay, we got Plantation Pineapple. Delicious stuff. It's amazing. It's a flavored rum, which, you know, most flavored rums are totally disgusting and gross, but this one is not in that category at all, and it is truly amazing. I love it. A uh, bottle of Jambui. So again, this will be one that we do like a um, comparison with with the old Jambui I have. Um, I use I use Jambui like not often, often, but you know fairly regularly. I think it can work on a lot of different cocktails, even though it's Scotch based. Which Scotch doesn't always play super well in cocktails, but I think it can actually do pretty well. Uh, well here we have it's about well our twelve year, uh, nice weeded bourbon. I wish this was easier to find, at least around here where I am. I don't see it that often. Um, it seems to be a bottle that's pretty pretty tough to find, especially with the explosion in, in whiskey and bourbon motors lately. So um, I don't have a ton left of that one, but when that one's gone, that's all I have, I think. Uh, here we go. Uh, a Koli Hao. This is a Hawaiian liqueur. Actually, I haven't played with it. I got this like years ago, and I haven't played with it much. I need to spend some time with it, but... Again, it's one of those ones that doesn't call for a lot of classic cocktails, which is where I kind of come from. Um, but I need to play with it, so maybe we'll put it on the shelf so I can remind myself to do some more stuff with it. Uh, Averna, another nice Amaro. I know people can get really deep on Amaros, so there's a lot of them out there. I've got a few that I kind of play with and use, not like a ton, a ton, but 
you know, it's, it's an area that I think I can grow into and, you know, well, depending on how much room we have in here, which this place is going to be totally full. But anyway, we'll do our best um, to, uh, to fill this thing up. But yeah, originally, excuse me, a little, little sip. Originally, we're going to have way more storage space in this bar um, for actual bottles. So I wasn't going to do a wet bar. But pretty recently, we decided to do a wet bar because I think it's going to make it like a thousand times more functional as a bar. Um, so that took away a lot of bottle storage. So I was going to be able to put a lot more bottles in here originally. So I kind of lost the bottle storage, but we gained, I think, a lot of functionality as a bar itself. Um, so Templeton Small Batch Rye Whiskey. Um, Templeton is an interesting story. And yeah, so we'll get into that at some point. This is one of the, this is an old bottle for them um, where they were actually like hand labeling it back in the day. And so, oh, hi Madeline, thanks for watching. You're awesome. And so this is a small bottle, or this is an old bottle. And I have a newer bottle, so I'm gonna do a comparison with them too coming up just to kind of see how if their stuff has changed because they're an interesting story. Um, the I'm like, this counts me way off, but it'll give us an idea. The Freud 10 year, pretty standard stuff, but um, it's super good. Our shells are, our shells should be very sturdy, I'm hoping. We're gonna find out. If they come crashing down, it's gonna be on YouTube, so everybody's gonna see it. Uh, glass vodka, this is a vodka in, um, this is in kind of downtown Seattle area as well. And so, um, it's pretty clean. I'm not a big vodka guy. Um, but you know, some people are, so I'll bust that out for them every once in a while, but let's put that on the top shelf because it's a pretty bottle and it doesn't get used all that often. Uh, I'll put it there for now. Bottle Everclear. I don't ever actually do this, but um... Oh, hello from Russia. I didn't, I didn't catch your name, but thanks for watching. Um, bottle Everclear. We don't really... I never actually do anything with this. I just um, try to do basically like, I mean, I'll mix like some bitters or some other stuff like that up, um, but usually just for like, keeping syrups a little bit longer and a little alcohol to them. So that one is one that I'll probably just put down the ground. What self-respecting home bar has ever clear in it, right? Although it does useful for, like I said, making syrups, that kind of stuff. We got a question, let's see. Oh yeah, the shelves. Um, they're pretty solid actually. So like, they're actually all out of one piece of maple plywood. Um, so they're pretty solid. I don't think they're gonna come down. I mean, if they do, I guess they do. But you know, I'm more concerned about earthquakes being in the Northwest actually. And cause if we have, cause I only have a half inch lip overhang to keep bottles from coming out. Um, so at some point in the future, I might try to add some railings to keep them in in case we do have an earthquake. Cause if we do, they're all gonna come crashing down. Um, but, you know, that's neither here nor there, so let's just keep on moving. Herb Song, uh, a nice kind of absinthe-like spirit. And I'm not a big absinthe guy. Like, this one, I've had this bottle for years, and it's hardly gets used because it gets used in, like, quarter ounce here, runs a glass there, super small amounts, but I like the flavor of it, so we'll just kind of go with that. Uh, Laird's. Straight up, uh, straight up brandy, bottled and bond. This stuff is amazing. Um, it's the only, like, it's like the gold standard for apple brandy. And it's pretty awesome that it's so old in our country. And yeah, it's just a great spirit. It's kind of unfortunate. Well, it's unfortunate that don't, people feel to know about them, like, like regular folks, not cocktail folks. But, you know, then if everybody knew about it, how awesome it is, then people would drink it and then we wouldn't have it. And, you know, it's hard to get. But, Anyways, let's keep moving. Uh, this is Kohana rum. This is, uh, I think it's called Kia or Kea. Uh, my boss is Hawaiian. She'll probably like murder me tomorrow for my pronunciation of Hawaiian terms. Um, but we visited this distillery back in 2008, actually before they opened. And they're basically producing um, agricole rum from Hawaiian cane. And they're using all these single variety of cane. And they have a really cool, cool production there. And I would love to go back. So this particular cane variety, this bottle, bottle is Mahi Ula. And um, I want to get some more of them, more of their rums. Really tasty, cool stuff. I like it a lot. Uh, Ransom Old Tom Gin. There's a few Old Toms that work out there. This is one that I like and use. Um, but yeah, so we'll just leave it at that. Oh gosh. 
Like, oh, we got a lot of space left, people. We got a lot of space. I'm a little concerned, but we'll see what we can do. Here we go. We have some some mezcal. This is Bozal. Uh, this is Quixote, um, and this is. I'm not sure on the pronunciation of this one, so I'm not going to butcher it yet. I'm going to do a little bit of research to try to avoid butchering it. Um, but this is super tasty stuff. Mezcal is an area that um, I need to get more of because it's delicious. And it's not the cheapest stuff out there, which, I mean, it's kind of all um, produced in small quantities, which makes sense. So I don't have a ton of mezcal, but I want more. So any mezcal producers out there, you want to see your bottles up here and get on our show? Just send me bottles of Mezcal. We'll get you on the show. That's two more bottles. Um, Edward Teach, um, 12 year old rum. So this is, I think this is from the Cayman Islands. And I don't think this is distilled in the Cayman Islands. My dad got it on a cruise. Um, so I don't think it was distilled there, but it was probably bottled. And so it's actually, it's pretty decent stuff, pretty tasty. So. Um, and I tried to do a little bit of research and I couldn't find much about it. So that's kind of all I know about it, which is not a lot. Just put that one right there. Hopefully the bars don't look pretty cool in like an actual bar. Um, it's been like an empty space for a long time for us. Um, here's an old empty bottle of um, Akavi. And this is also from... U.S. Navy mess, so, but it's just empty. I don't have anything in it, so we'll just leave that there for kind of decoration. Another old bottle of Mart Martini and Rossi um, dry vermouth. Nothing in it also again, but kind of cool. So I'm not going to count those towards our, our bottle account. Bitter True Pimento Dram. Um, normally I got this bottle and I'm typically I've been using Allspice Dram uh, or St. Elizabeth Allspice Dram and they do actually taste quite a bit different so at some point I'll do a video and kind of comparisons and like when this one might be good versus St. Elizabeth. Uh, here we go, Spy Hop Distilled Gin. So this is a distillery um, up in the San Juan Islands in Washington. And like I said before, kind of small distillers are like super hit or miss in my experience and opinion. You know, they think that like their, their products are always priced pretty high because they don't have the economies of scale like a large producer like say Tanqueray, right? Which these people who are big Tanqueray, beef eater, they make an amazing product and they have a economy of scale to keep the price at a good point. And so it's like this stuff, most distillers have a, small distillers have a hard time combating that and people just buy it because it's like oh it's local in the backyard so it's super cool right but people who actually kind of i think know about spirits a little bit are a little bit more discerning but this stuff is a small distillery up in the Salmon islands and they produce like amazing stuff and i was blown away um so this one actually like use local island um, botanicals that they you know source around the island and it actually tastes like the island smells when you're there which is pretty cool um so i really like that Uh, Merlet, creme de fraise. So this is strawberry liqueur. Um, my wife loves this stuff. I think we used to be able to get this pretty often in our state. I don't know if the distribution changed or what. I'm sure it did. Um, but it's super tasty. And it's like summer in a bottle. I'm running out of my Alaska cocktail here. If you guys are having a cocktail tonight, uh, let me know what you're drinking. I'd be curious. Uh, another, um, Chivas Regal, blended scotch, kind of my like mixing scotch, rusty nails, that kind of stuff. Um, kind of a go-to. Uh, this is a Hennessy Pure White Cognac. So this is uh, it's not a bottle you can't get. I don't think they put this bottle in the US. Um, I believe it's a European bottle. And it's an interesting flavors to it. I mean, I don't know if it's good as some other cognacs that I've had or other brandies, but it's, it's interesting. Uh, we'll put that one somewhere over here. We're gonna have to start squeezing stuff in. We got more. We're gonna ruin this shelf a lot to expand to. In the bottom. In the bottom. Okay, here we go. Here's some good stuff. George T. Stag, um, Kentucky Bourbon. Bourbon. 
Uh, this stuff is super good. This is the same, they're both the same vintage. These are, the, I think, the 2010 release. And this one's full, this one's, you know, a quarter down. Good stuff, super strong at 70, 71 and a half percent. Um, but super tasty. So I've got the extra, the extra's gonna go in storage. And this one we'll put up here somewhere. Sazerac rye whiskey. Uh, this is one of my standard go-to rye whiskeys for mixing. Um, mixing, mixing, that's a, just mixing up some drinks um, for mixing drinks. And um, this is, this one and Old Overhaul are kind of like my standard pours. I really, I really like this, the Sazerac. Um, this used to be six year, I took the statement off. I wonder if it's no longer six year, I don't know. Anyways, good stuff. Also, um, so we asked about storage. Oh, just down here, I'm just, have a space where I'm gonna put all my extras that are kind of ready to um, that aren't opened yet basically or I have duplicates of like I have another bottle of Sazerac where it's like a little bit open um, Bulls Geneva this is uh, another bottle I use not like a lot when I mix when I mix with this stuff but eh, frequently um, and then I just ran out so this is a brand new bottle it has a really interesting flavor I think you do some interesting cocktails with it No, I think I'm slacking on my bottle count. I'm just making this up. Um, so this is gridiron vodka. This is another vodka by the same distillery as the glass vodka. The glass vodka is distilled with grapes. This I think is um, mostly grain. This is 75% grain distillate and 25% grape, or that one is all grape. So another vodka because I don't do a ton of vodka, but you know, I wish I had like a vodka in there thing. I'm just like making up numbers at this point. Kind of. Bottle of OFTD. This stuff is great to mix with for tiki drinks. Um, the bottle is like super intense. Like this big old handle up here. I feel like this is like made for like knocking somebody in the head with it, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, but I'm almost out. So we'll just put that there. It'll get used up pretty soon, I'm sure. Uh, here's my cachaça I have. Only have one bottle. Like I said, some places I have more. Like I would say more rum because rum, I do more tiki stuff. It takes more rums. Um, a lot of this stuff, I just have like one expression of that type of like, category. Um, this is really good for the price though. Like super good. My other go-to cachaça is um, Nova Fogo. Um, a little more expensive, but also very good. Uh, here we go, let's see. Cointreau, so like this will be a part of our, our um, comparison to the vintage stuff. So root liqueur, art and age. Um, have you ever had the Bull Ceramic Bottle? Um, I have not had that one yet. Um, yeah, I haven't had that, the Ceramic Bottle Bulls yet. Um, I need to. So Root, this liqueur is super interesting. And I worked for like a really long time trying to like get this to work in a drink. It tastes like root beer, but it's super like overpowering. Like a small amount would just totally just take a drink and it tastes like this. And so, this is really hard to work with. And so finally, I made a drink not too long ago, maybe a couple months ago, or maybe actually three months ago, where I made a really delicious drink using this, and I kind of figured out why. So I'll do a video about that drink and talk more about this. Um, but this doesn't get used a lot, so it's gonna go up top. So far the shelves feel really solid. I don't think they're gonna go anywhere. I think we're safe, I hope. <laughs> Uh, plantation, this is our Barbados rum, 20 year. It's super um, pineapple if I remember. Um, but I like it though. We'll just put it there with the plantation corner. That'll be the plantation corner. Uh, five year Eldorado rum. Nice, nice bottle to use for mixing. Uh, here we have a bottle of Pappy Van Winkle 15 year. We got another question. Uh, are they discontinued? I don't know if the root is discontinued or not. I'm not totally sure what they're doing with our age stuff. I got that a little while ago. Um, yeah, Pappy 15 year. Super good also. Definitely not worth secondary market prices, which are astronomical. But it's really good. 
Uh, Patty Van Winkle 12 Year Lot B. Um, I actually haven't opened this one yet, so I need to do that. So at some point I'll do a Pappy Van Winkle episode and we'll try them all, the ones I have, the 20, the 15, and the 12 year lot B stuff to kind of compare them. And no, I did not buy my Pappy at like secondary market prices. I got those a long time ago. Uh, Wallflower Gin, this is Oz Society out of Vancouver. Went up there a little while ago um, and bought some stuff. And they were, I like, the, I like their products a lot, so the good solid gem. Uh, Tanqueray Malacca. This can make some really, it's like softer than your standard Tanqueray and so it can make some really nice cocktails with it and I don't use it as much as I should be using it. Really what I'm trying to say is I should be drinking a lot more than I do but with kids and work and life sometimes you're limited. Uh, another bottle of Willet Rye Whiskey, so I've got a little bit of somewhere in here, I'm not sure where. Um, this is an extra bottle I have, so it'll go down in storage. Uh, one more bottle of Willet 12 Year, I thought that this was my last bottle, this somewhere. I don't even, this is my problem, is finding stuff I put, I don't even know where I put stuff. Um, somewhere, anyways. But this is my last bottle, I think, so this will be in storage as well. Uh, Heritage is still in Commander Rye Whiskey. So this is a White Dog Rye, whis or, um, rye Whiskey. And this is from a local distillery not far from my house. And they do, so they do they have some good stuff. They just have a ton of bottles. And they're really interesting. And that, they kind of fall in more of the category of a small place where they don't make as good a product as I think some other places do or the big names. So they're interesting. Um, and I use this like a little bit, not too much. So we're going to put this somewhere. Do you want to get the punch bowl? Sure. The last one. I'll put that one up there for now. I don't know. Starting to get down there. I'm a couple couple tracks behind. Hope you guys are enjoying the live stream and watching our bar actually get stocked. Uh, this has been a long time coming for us. And so, um, we've got a big, giant glass punch bowl crystal. I think my grandma gave this to me. Um, but this can hold quite a bit of punch, which is cool. We're gonna put it up top here. Okay, don't fall down, don't fall down. Don't come crashing down. Uh, somebody else know about the cocktail we're gonna make when it gets stocked. Um, I think the cocktail we're gonna make is a, um, probably a last word um, with the chartreuse VEP, because my wife loves that, it's her favorite drink, so. Um, and then we can do this I mean, I couldn't do this by myself, so she's a big part of it. So yeah, it's going to be a very high-end last word. It'll be our first, our first bottle. So Luxardo, Maraschino, we're talking about last words. This is essential to that. We've got like four of these bottles. That one's unopened. Uh, another bottle of Plantation Pineapple and Blade in the Wings. Um, Japanese Whiskey, this is called... Um, which this is which this is a Centauri bottle, so this is Hakushu, and um, it's really got some cool notes to it. I like it a lot. My pronunciation is probably off, but I'll I'll work on improving that. That's like the number one concern I have about this particular doing like live videos is totally butchering names, which I don't know. I do the best I can. All right, more bottles. Bitter Truth Violet Liqueur, um, good stuff. The other one that's um, Creme de Violet is another one from House of Alpins. Uh, we use that one a lot. So this one I haven't used as much, but um, eventually we'll get to it. I'm not doing a good job tracking these bottles. Somebody out there watching should be counting how many bottles we're doing. Um, Cam and Sons, this is uh, a spirit out of the UK, or I don't know if it's bottled in the UK, it probably is. Um, anyways, it's, you can't get this in America, this is a UK spirit, or not, sorry, not UK, uh, European spirit. It's ginseng, it says really interesting flavor, so we're gonna play with that some more. Uh, 
uh, Barrows and Tents is the ginger liqueur. Um, it's really good, actually, and it, um, I think, does some cool stuff in cocktails. And so I really like it a lot. And they have some like cool recipes and yeah. So they sent me this a little while ago and I need to, I'll be doing more with it. But yeah, I have been using it. I'm just gonna throw that somewhere. Or maybe we'll put it, we'll squeeze it in down here since it's small. Uh, four square, 2004, this would be the, um, Port ex bourbon cask. Um, this is really amazing stuff. I love it. And we're gonna just gonna start pushing stuff back. It's gonna get real crowded in here. So we have a lot left. Yep. Not really. Almost done. Oh wow. I don't even. I'm not doing good tracking. So here we have. This is actually a pretty rare bottle. So this is White Lion VSOA. Um, this is a coconut Iraq spirit, and they used to come into he used to import this into us probably like four or five years ago and to my knowledge i don't know if there's any coconut iraq being imported into the us right now um i know there's a dis, there's um a distill not a distillery i guess a label distillery or whatever um that's working on i follow on instagram and i'm trying to get them i'd like them to bring it into the us so we'll see if they do it which would be awesome but yeah this is kind of a prized bottle of mine um, that I don't get to play with that much because this is all I have left. So once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, another bottle of Tanqueray Malacca. So that'll be in storage down here. Uh, tequila Fortaleza. This is their Anejo. And I don't have a lot of tequila. That's an area that I need to expand upon. But again, so I come from kind of a classic cocktail background. And so tequila is relatively new and popular there in the U.S. and didn't really come into cocktails at all, or especially classic cocktails. Um, and so that's why I don't have a ton of it, but I, I love the flavors of agave, spirits, mezcal, tequila. Um, and so I want to play more with it. So that's an area that I want to expand upon. Uh, Plantation, Barbados five year, pretty pretty nice standard little pour. Uh, this is Elixir Vegetal. So it's like a it's a shirt it's like green chartreuse on steroids. And it is like it blew me away. I had this at a friend's house, lives by me, and then he had this bottle and he luckily um, gave it to me, which is super cool. And it is amazing. Like I said, it is like green chartreuse times 10. And it is just like intense. It's like green chartreuse bitters. And I love it. We're gonna, I made a cocktail with it. We're gonna make that on our show not too long from now. And so we'll be, we'll be going more into detail on this little guy. I'll just put him right there. Speaking of green chartreuse, the one, the only. We go through a lot of this stuff, and it's super expensive in our state. Uh, Hibiki, Japanese whiskey. Um, I want to get a little more into Japanese whiskey, so our bar is kind of styled, um, kind of inspiration from Japanese um, bars and the way they do things and how they're very process oriented. And so, not necessarily like American bars, sometimes are more about speed and you know, kind of service, whereas I think a lot of Japanese, they really focus on the process of making drinks, which is one aspect that I think home bartending can be very different is that I don't really have to do a lot of speed stuff. I can really focus on what I'm crafting, which is kind of cool as a lecture that home bartenders get. Here we have a bottle of Thomas Handy Sazerac Rye. Super good stuff, 63.45% alcohol. Um, this makes a mean Manhattan. It's super expensive, but really good. I think this is the 2010 vintage as well.
um, Pacific Absinthe. This is a local absinthe out of, I think, Woodville, Washington. Um, I really like it. I think it's a great bottle. Like I, said, I don't do, like, absinthe's the one spirit category I'm not in love with, but I use it, I think it, the flavor of it's great in cocktails, but I'm not, I never pour myself a glass of absinthe. I know some people love it, and they do. I just don't. So, like, literally, this is the only absinthe by stock, and then along with kind of the herb song. Um, but this is really good stuff. I like it a lot. How are shelves holding up? They feel pretty good. They feel pretty solid. I'm told we're almost done. We're like getting close to being done with our bottles. Or no? No, we are. <laughs> I told you that before, but then I discovered a we stash. Stiffered, we found more. We thought we were almost done. Like I said, I don't think it's all going to fit what we have. So we're going to... I would like to eventually kind of cool it down so everything we have fits in here um, because I don't want bottles like strewn about my house. It would be nice if it was all contained in one one bar. Um, here's a agricole. I need to get a few more agricoles. This is kind of the one I have right now I think. Um, or maybe I should. I just got done saying that I'm going to do less bottles and then I said I want more agricoles. So I guess I have a conflict there. But we'll work that out. We'll work that out. Uh, another bottle of Foursquare Rum. This is the Port Cask Finish. And also super tasty. I love their stuff. I drink a lot of like Rum Neat as well as making cocktails. Not with that one, but um, another bottle of Scotch we have. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't do a ton of Scotch, but maybe some. Filling up. Uh, bitter Truth Apricot Liqueur. I'm not a big fruit liqueur guy. I kind of skew more herbal. Um, but this can add some nice touches to cocktails. I'm just going to get real friendly up there with these bottles. Grand Marnier, another orange liqueur. Um, at some point, I'll do like a tasting between like Cointreau and this. Um, they're, they're different for sure um, in terms of what they bring to a drink. Let's see if that'll fit there. Uh, this is some cane syrup, so you need this for a tea punch. Um, very important stuff. Another bottle of Cointreau. This one's not opened, I don't think. Uh, we have Rum Barbancourt. So it's the Haitian rum, eight years. This one's almost gone. So I need to, oh, I'm the writing, I just, I don't know how many, I'm not keeping track. I've done a terrible job. We're just gonna do a manual count at some point. Um, this one's almost gone. I just need to polish this bottle off. Maybe we'll do that after our video. That's actually a good idea. Um, we'll just put that there so you remember to do that. Uh, Campari, you can't go wrong with Campari. So this one is not open, and I haven't opened one. So we'll put that one down in storage. Uh, like I said, one of another bottles of Luxor de Maraschino. We have an open one. Red Breast 12 Year Irish Whiskey. I'm not a, like, I'm not a big Irish whiskey guy, but I really like this. So like this again, so I don't have a ton of bottles of this kind of thing, but you know, one is nice to have. I found, I found some more space back here. I think this means we need to start drinking more. Um, Ardbeg, another, another nice scotch. Hey, it's an old cherry hearing bottle. Um, I'm not sure what the, um, I'm guessing it's probably like 60s, 70s, something like that. And again, it's empty, I don't in it. Um, here's a bunch of like old random like bitters and things. I'm just gonna store bitters down here for now until I figure out where I'm gonna put them. Maybe I'll just kind of put them in random places. Um, Angostura, I think I've got a bottle. This is an extra, so I'll put that down in storage. 
some of these. I got these for free. I went to like a restaurant supply store to buy some stuff and they're like, oh, I see you're buying some cocktail stuff. Do you want some bitters for free? And I'm like, okay, sure. Um, so I got cranberry bitters here and then old fashioned aromatic. I don't really love the Fee, the Fee Brothers stuff. Um, so we'll see, I'll try them and if they're any good, they're good. And if not, oh well. Is that, so that's all of our, so we have, like I said, we have different bottles in different places. Um, we still have a ton of bottles in our kitchen because we've got these like cabinets up above. Um, so maybe eventually I'll bring some stuff from there over here, but we don't have a ton of room left in here, as you can see, sort of, like we've got three shelves. Um, so we'll have to kind of play with some stuff and try to get rid of some stuff. Um, it's pretty well fact right now. And then we have all our tools still, but um, somebody asked, how do you amass this much? Um, well, we probably buy, we probably buy more than we drink. Like I said, I said we, we have kids and jobs and lives and I'm actually like, I really, I can't drink close to bedtime at all. So I can't have a cocktail or I can like sip on something a little bit, but I just, I don't sleep as well. So like, I like to drink with ooh in the night. Um, if I have a cocktail, like at dinner time, that's like kind of when I like to do it. Um, and so, yeah, like with the kids, they're just busy. And so often I don't actually, people think, oh, you have like a YouTube show about cocktails. Well, I must like drink cocktails all the time. Like I actually don't. I drink them, you know, regularly more than your average um, red-blooded American. Um, but I should clearly be drinking more if we're going to try to like cut this down a little bit. And plus we've been doing, I've been into cocktails for since 2008, so almost a decade now. Um, you know, so it's kind of like I haven't, it's not coming into this recently, so it's this is kind of amassed over a decade of time, and now it's actually all in one place, and you kind of see, like, oh, it's actually a lot. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, and before we didn't have like a great layout, and so it's hard to see it all, but I think now that I actually can see what we have to work with, it'll be actually easier for me to kind of like process through some bottles and say, hey, let's not, we're not going to restock that one, or we need that one. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at, but. That's kind of what we have now. So our bar, like I said, is Japanese inspired. I'm going to do a specific video about our bar. Um, kind of really go into the features of it, the details of it, um, what I kind of mix. But it was, our house is Victorian, um, but the bar is kind of like Japanese inspired sort of. And so um, there's some details around that I'll talk about. Um, and there's a really cool mode that this bar can convert into. It has some tiki drinks um, that I'm also very excited about. So yeah, watch our bar video. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it if you tuned in and watched us stock our bar. Um, there's a lot of cool bottles in here I know. I'm excited to drink through some of them and talk more about them. And I'm excited to be back doing videos for Better Cocktails at Home. Um, I think we're going to kind of do a different way because our space is so small. It's only four feet across, six feet deep. It used to be a closet. Now it's a home bar. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. I appreciate everybody who watches our show. Uh, feel free to share with your friends. You know, say, hey, this guy makes some cool cool drinks every once in a while. He's got a cool home bar. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. Because I want to do more and try to grow our, our show a lot. Um, let's see. Yeah, two bottles. Old show. Yeah, that was a long time ago. That was up on our attic that has now been converted into a, like, play space for our kids and it's all finished now but that was a cool set and that kind of got us started um this is a much cooler set um and it'll present some problems of filming just because of the size and the space issues but we're going to try to figure out we're going to work around it we're going to make a lot of cool videos coming up um so thanks for watching and we will be making videos soon and i appreciate you watching better cocktails at home so all right see you then how do i stop this